Hey guys, Coach Hick again. Um, got a couple questions last night from Carolina fans talking about the implementation of the tight end um, in the spread air raid system. Um, also got a couple of questions about you know what people like UCF are doing um, in more of a theory of how Carolina will try and stop them, but also. Um, you know, just some differences in what RPOs that certain teams are employing. So what I've done tonight is I've taken a concept that I, UCF has really done a lot of uh, over the course of the last two years that I think you're seeing a lot of college football teams implement uh, called the spear concept. And it's a easy way to get your H back um, or your second back involved uh, in the passing game, in the RPO game. It's also something that um, fans will see uh, from a lot of people. And it also shows us a theory of how uh, there are different types of run pass option plays and what people have to do to combat this. So I'm going to take you guys uh, back to huddle and explain what's going on in what you're going to see Central Florida run and what they call their spear concept. And I'm seeing more and more people um, do this in particularly in the red zone because as the field shrinks, it gets a whole lot harder to throw um, what we saw um, in my last video, which was the slot seam route because these safeties are a little bit tighter um, and you have a lower percentage throw um, on the fades and, you know, the bang eight post route, which I've got drawn up here. And a lot of times people lose sight of the tight ends. So uh, a lot of times you, you might have to draw up something a little bit different in your run game. Because when we explained um, when the tight end was in the core, meaning when he was a part of the run scheme yesterday, but whether or not it was the zone excuse me, the zone concept or the counter concept, you had a core of six, meaning the five down linemen and the H were responsible for, um, the H were, were responsible for blocking a man, meaning you had a six man core. So I'm actually going to draw up a defense as we were. Let's just put a um, four, two, five up here. And, and move these guys over some. I, I realize it'll, I'll play around with it a little bit in what people are trying to do um, to combat this stuff uh, that a lot of people are working on. So I've got just a true um, four two five split field coverage, cover four concept, two high safeties, and what certain people are trying to do. So when you looked at the RPO that we talked about yesterday, uh, the guy that Carolina was really trying to manipulate was this nickel defender right here for App. They were playing this guy in this apex between the tackle and the number two receiver, and you saw him blitz. Well, actually, he didn't blitz. He shuffle squeezed in here, and it opened up this cavity right here behind the void. Well, what happens, and a lot of people, particularly down in the red zone, they're either going to blitz more or you might get more of a true man-to-man -man where you bump these guys in a little bit more down in here, which means even though I'm adding, even though I still have a threat of a core of six men, like you have it with five blockers and a, and a back, you sometimes want to add the fact that the quarterback now may be a runner. All right, so what you're going to see right here when we show this video is the spear concept. So what Central Florida is going to do is there, when you only have the core of five and you want to send the tight end out in the route, you're going to leave one, or in this case with a seven-man box, two guys in the core unblocked, and you will have a read defender. So let's put the, end, the defensive end in this particular picture as a read, and then you have basically a pitch defender. So when you think of the old school wishbone, a quarterback would have read this defensive end, and if that end would have got up the field, he would have given it to a fullback. If that end was to squeeze, he would now take the ball down the line and pitch the football 
off of a Sam backer or a walk down strong safety. Well, in this case, you have a very similar theory because we know we've got two hats for two hats out here on the corner um, and the strong safety. You're basically using this spear route, this um, flat route by the H coming across as the pitch component in a triple option. You are reading this defensive end. So if that defensive end crashes down, we know we cannot hand the ball off to the tailback in the run portion of the run pass option. So if that guy squeezes down, that quarterback could theoretically keep this football. And then we're going to work a two on one on this nickel back. Now, what happens in this particular picture is this guy will actually slant the side. So at that point, he knows he's not getting the football. And the bait route will immediately out leverage this nickel who comes in this particular picture, making it an easy two over two. We've got both of these guys blocked and they're gonna throw it out uh, for a quick throw. Why this is a good concept in my opinion with what so many people are doing uh, with this particular formation. I showed you guys this picture. Um, I showed you, I'm moving myself over here. I showed you guys this picture uh, last night, Carolina was in a very similar formation. You have 11 personnel, meaning one back or one tight end, but the benefits of having that H back or that tight end in a Y off position, meaning he can create an extra gap to the side he's already on. He can kick to this side. He can insert to either side, or he could come across. So the defense has to react to this like a two back formation. So you can see in this particular picture, if this was an old school triple option theory and you had a dive back and a pitch back, you would be reading this particular stack. So whichever one of these guys took the dive and then you would pitch off of this apex defender out here. Now what FAU does is you can see they're actually gonna slant this defensive end inside. All right, and gonna use this uh, Mike Backer in this particular interest as the C-gap scraper, and they're going to have a blitzer off the edge. But that tells us right now that I am not going to hand this football off. Okay, they are five for five. They are really six for only our five in the core. Because remember, this tight end is no longer in the core because he is part of the RPO concept, so you cannot count him. So right here, we know we're playing a five on six football game. FAU has more hats for the dive component of this. And as they come on, you will see the quarterback from UCF come off the mesh and pull the football. Now, on the thing about the spear concept is very seldom does this ball not get thrown if it gets pulled, but the theory is if this guy squeezes down the line that he is not going to hand it. And you can see him come off that mesh for half a step. And he's going to deliver this ball to the flat, which, you know, that's no different than when you guys watch Georgia Tech or when you watched uh, West Virginia with Pat White and Steve Slayton. Those guys would read that defensive end. They'd come down the line, and if that nickel back came, they would fire out that bubble screen. We're just doing something a little bit different because this complements this complements the run game that a lot of these spread air raid teams like to do where they like to run zone to one side, meaning everybody runs to the left, and they like to run what they call the slice zone or the split zone where this guy comes and kicks the end man on the line of scrimmage. So, for instance, at this point, when I pause this picture to this defense, this looks absolutely no different than if they were running inside zone to the left with this H back coming to kick the in man. So what you tell your defensive guys is squeeze the air of the defense. Everything right here looks like we've got inside zone, let's spill the ball. We've got the quarterback player coming off. They are not banking on this guy getting leveraged by him because they think he is in the core. They think he is the sixth blocker. So you see the UCF quarterback come off the mesh and still throw the football. That is a read RPO component, meaning we don't know we only have five in the core instead of six, but I've got one additional guy in a traditional route.
concept. So this is a easy way to get the tight end involved in the red zone. It also helps because it's actually two less defenders uh, that you have to block the end and whoever the tight end would have to um, block if you were putting him in a core run play. So pretty good ball play getting this ball out to the edge. Um, you know, the greater question is how do you combat this, I guess, if you're Carolina? Um, you know, once again, this is a pretty good play call um, against a particular defense that's called. Um, but what you want to try and teach whoever your overhangs are, whether or not that's a blitzer off the edge or the nickel Sam and you're playing some type of quarters with a strong safety back here, never get out leveraged by a perimeter concept. So if they're going to run this over here, we should be block playing man to man on both of those and he should use what we call an echo technique. So if that guy comes at him, it is now his job to make sure this guy never leverages me to the sideline. In that particular instance, then this ball would not get caught. It would at least force the quarterback to run. And because you've got an inside slant by the defensive lineman in this particular picture, this ball should, if it's given, it should cut back to that unblocked mic backer. Or if the quarterback pulls it, the mic backer should in that particular um, instance to the boundary, um, what you have a little bit more of um, a good thing going defensively is the sideline can be used uh, as a half defender. They're not going to use that as much. Um, but once again, a situation where the offense has a better call on than the defense, really good job blocking on the edge by both those guys and a good read run pass option. So really, if you look at this, you can see, as opposed to the picture you saw yesterday, where Sam Howell's eyeballs were over here in an area, this quarterback, first and foremost, when you pause this picture, he has got his eyes on this tight C gap. So he knows right now that ball's getting pulled. And now his eyes will go to the next defender. The spear route has the man out leveraged. And the ball's to the flat, really terrific job on the edge blocking and Central Florida gets an explosive play. So hopefully that clears things up for you guys on different types of RPOs, what you're going to see a lot from UCF. We'll talk more about them as we go forward, but it's a very good offensive football team. They do some good stuff adding the quarterback run game in the red zone and getting the ball to the tight end in the red zone.